Hello, I'm Atu George, and I'm so blessed today to be bringing you God's truth. Now, we've been speaking on the Abrahamic blessing, and I told you, the Lord said this month he is visiting, and the reason he's visit, visiting is to confirm in us the Abrahamic blessing. I didn't say to confer, I said to confirm. That means to be sure we are. See, it's like when someone has given you something and then he's coming to be sure you are walking in that thing. Praise God. And, and then we started on Monday. I began to show you from Galatians when he says, Christ redeemed us from the cause of the Lord. The reason for that redemption is so that the blessing of Abraham may come on the Gentiles. And then we, and then it comes on the Gentiles through Christ. So because of Jesus, we who were formerly Gentiles, when, what do you mean Gentiles? Outside of the um, commonwealth of Israel, that God, you know, God selected Israel as a people. And, and but then because of Christ, we that were outside of that covenant have been brought in to have equal right in that covenant. Now that's what we began to talk about on Monday and then we are going to continue. And, and I pray that the Spirit of God will open your heart and your mind. And beyond that, that you will begin to walk in the fullness of the blessing of Abraham, praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread as God instructed us to? You remember the Lord told us that on this broadcast, we should be declaring or we should make requests or demand for our daily bread. So are you ready to do that? It's part of the Abrahamic blessing, you know that? Now, this is something God, and I've shown you these things. I keep showing you the reason why we do this. So Jesus said, when we pray, we should say, give us this day our daily bread. Meaning there's daily bread for you to receive every day. So are you ready to make that demand right now? Make it like someone who knows what he's talking about. Don't make it like someone who's trying out something. It's yours. You're not begging God for it. You're making demand for what is yours. Praise God. Are you ready? Say with me. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, as simple as that sounded, it carries so much power. You see, because the power is in your speaking. Now, because you have spoken it, then even right now, the angels are working out something for you. So expect a miracle today. Praise God. Now, Genesis chapter 12. We looked into this yesterday. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Genesis chapter 12, from verse 1 again. I, I need to start from here again. It said, Now the Lord has said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Now, this is very significant. We'll talk about the blessing of Abraham. Why is this significant? Now, first of all, I want you to understand that this is not the first time that God was talking to Abraham. Now, this command actually shows that Abraham had had a relationship with God before this time. Now, because God will not just wake up and come to you and give you clear-cut instruction like this. No, that's not how God does his things. He develops a relationship with you. And I'm going to show you in this broadcast why I said that, why that's also important to know. Now, God just came and said, get out of your country. So leave your country. Leave your family. Leave your father's house to a place that I will show you. Meaning there is a place that God had for Abraham. He says to a place that I will show you. He didn't give him the address, didn't give him the name of the place. He just said, get out of your father's house, from your country and, 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 and from your family. 
So he's not saying relocate your family members. Do you understand what I'm saying? He said, you come out of your family. So Abraham obeyed God, took his wife, and then they left. But then here's what God said. He says, now, when you obey me, and this is the reason that I want to do what I'm doing. Now, that's another thing with God. God doesn't just do things without reason. God doesn't just do things without a purpose. He always has a purpose. Now, when, when, when you look at the things God says to you, sometimes, you know, people go, oh, God just told me to do this. I didn't know why. I don't understand. Hey, hey, hey. He always tells the purpose. It's you that will not understand because sometimes people are not patient enough to hear the full gist from God. So people are not patient to hear the full gist from God. They, they, God begins to speak and then the little they've heard, they want to run with it. No, you've got to wait for God. Now the Bible says you have need of patience. You have need of patience. Anyone who has really walked with God will tell you this. There is no way you walk with God without developing patience. It's very, very important. Praise God. Very important. You, you can, oh God, you know, no, no, do this. No, no, no. Wait, when God is speaking to you, you've got to be patient to hear everything he's, he's, he wants to say to you so that you can understand him. See, so now God says, look, come out from your father's house, talking to Abraham, he says, I will make you a great nation. I will make you a great nation. Remember, I said, come out of your country. Come out of your nation. I will make you a great nation. So he's going to start a new thing from him. Then God says, I will bless you. Now, I told you yesterday, to bless means to take care of you. I will bless you. Now, when God says, I will bless you, or when someone says, I will bless you, you need to check the capacity of this person that wants to bless you. No one can bless you beyond his capacity. And that's something you need to understand. No one can bless you beyond his capacity so when a man says i will bless you you need to check the capacity that he carries see that now now so god says i will bless you and god says, i and make your name great and you shall be a blessing i was sharing this with you yesterday it's not just about blessing you so you become selfish he says i want to make you a blessing so hey i'll take care of you and then you will take care of others see that now now the one who's taking care of you i told you check his capacity now his capacity should determine how much or how many people you can be a blessing to see that so he's not just calling you to be one local champion he's calling you to greatness and then he's calling you to to make you great and then to strengthen and take care of a whole lot of people now that's what god said to abraham and he went on to say i will bless those that bless you and i will curse him who curses you and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed Wow, <laughs> what a thing to say to a man. What a thing for God to say to a man. Now then, thank you, Holy Spirit. Think of this, the instruction first, then the reason for the instruction, the purpose for the calling. Come out. This is what I want to do with you. For me to do this, you've got to detach yourself from your family, from your country, and and. And, and, and from your father's house, then you will go to where I will show you. Take note, he didn't tell you you're going to so so and so place. And at, at least that would have given him enough time to reason and say, oh, that's a nice place. You remember when, when Abraham and Lot had to part ways. Now, Abraham looked at Lot and said, hey, the land is before you. Choose. He gave him 
the opportunity to choose first. And they said, if you go right, I will go left. If you go left, I will go right. And, and the Bible said, Lord looked at the plains of Sodom and they were beautiful. They were nice. They were good. They, they, the, the whole place looked good. And Lord said, that's where I want praise God. And, and Abraham said, okay, you can have it. And Lot departed from him. Now, Lot had the opportunity to look at the place first and say, okay, I like this place. Abraham didn't have that opportunity. He didn't even know where he was going to. So he followed God as an act of faith. So remember, the Bible says, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. So note this, that anyone who walks with God he has to walk with God by faith. Now, this is why many times God doesn't give us the whole picture. Because if he gives you the whole picture, it's, it's, it's hardly is going to be by faith. If God tells you, look, I'm taking you to so and so and then you just figure out, okay, I have a friend in that place. Oh, he's doing so well. He's my good friend. Oh, I have an uncle there. Oh, I have, I have a family member there who's, who's, who's doing so well and they can actually take care of me. Now, you shift your purpose from the instruction of God to thinking in your mind about the benefits that you can see from that going to that place. Now, that destroys the faith element in that journey. Can you see now? Now, this is why God doesn't give us the whole picture many times. Because he wants us to please him. And the only way we can please him is when we act in faith concerning the instruction that he's giving to us. Now, a lot of people have missed it with God where this is concerned. Truly speaking, you know, God tells you, look, I want to do this with you. And then they begin to figure it in their minds. You know, now we, we are in the political season in our country right now. And, and many people have heard prophets said to them, look, I'm going to make you the governor. I'm going to make you the, this thing. and I'm going to make you that. Now they, now they don't spend time praying and asking the Lord, what exactly do you want me to do? Rather, they begin to think about it. I know how it works. And suddenly somebody come and tell you that, oh, look, I have, um, I have money. I'm ready to sponsor you. Oh, wow. Man, this thing is becoming a reality. Now, soon they begin to just think about the glory of that office, the beauty of that office, how they are going to be in charge of this whole place and, and make all the money that they need to make. How they will begin to tell themselves, man, my days of poverty is all over. Now, the moment you begin to do that you begin to displease God see that now because you are taking the faith element out of that journey and God is displeased and sometimes you know when God is displeased about a thing he he takes his mind he takes his hands off that thing and he will just be watching he will watch you until the day you come back to your senses and repent before him. You remember David, when David wanted to bring the ark back to Jerusalem. Now, it was a noble thing to do. But you see, you, it's the same thing with God consigning everything. It's got to be by faith. So David didn't go before the Lord to ask the Lord, how am I going to bring back the ark? He just said, I'm king, we can hire the best guys, we can get the best soldiers to guard the ark. And then he did all that. And then while they started that journey, God was angry. He wasn't pleased. Now you think we're doing a noble thing. God is excited. God is, you're trying to help God. And then the, the God to this place where the ark shook, the, the, the cat shook, shook. And when the cat shook, the ark almost fell, and then this guy named Uzzah wanted to help hold the ark from falling. And the Bible said, the anger of the Lord was kindled. Now take note of that word. The anger of the Lord was kindled. <laughs> you see that? Now, for the Bible to say the anger of the Lord was kindled, it means the anger of the Lord was there already. It's just there, just like, you know, your kitchen is, is full of gas, you know, the smell of gas already 
full in the kitchen, you know, and then you just went and you strike a match. What do you think is going to happen? <laughs> Praise God. So now the Bible said the anger of the Lord was kindled. So it just went off. Something just struck it. It was already there. So because all that journey, God wasn't pleased. And you know how you're not pleased about something and you're looking for how, how, how do I correct this thing? How do I, because this, this is not right. How do I correct this thing? This guy is doing this thing out of love, I know, but this is wrong. So how do I correct this thing? And, and why are you thinking all oh, that someone just strike, I mean, the match just went, boom. <laughs> and it cost someone's life. And so, David said, no, don't bring that ark anymore. I don't want to see that ark. Please take it over to someone's house. And then later, David repented. When he got to know the truth, he repented before the Lord and he did the right thing. And there was joy everywhere. So sometimes, you know, you, 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 you've heard from God and you started a journey because you've heard from God. Then along the way, you got carried away and then God's hand was stayed off that project god's hand was stayed off that thing that you were doing this happens everywhere this happens in marriages people they believe they've married the will of god they were too convinced that god was involved in the marriage oh it was they had a dream concerning this girl they spent time to fast and pray and then they had the dream several times and then other people came and confirmed that dream so they 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 knew this was god and then they got married and then Along the line, they don't even see eye to eye anymore. What do you think happened? Very simple. You forgot that there was a purpose. God doesn't just sit down and say, mm, this my son is a very handsome boy. There is this my daughter that is a very pretty lady. I think I want them to marry. I want to see the kind of children they will give birth to. And yes, oh, look at their wedding. You think that's what God is doing? Everything has a purpose. So the moment you take your mind of the purpose of God, not your own purpose. You stay the hand of God because you stop pleasing God. Now, in that marriage, there are acts of faith that God is going to lead both of you into that will make you please Him. The moment you stop pleasing God in that marriage, then His hand stays off that marriage. Praise God. Our time is up for today, but I think that's a good place to stop. And take note of this. Everything you do with God must have faith in it. Everything you do with God must have faith in it. If the faith element is gone, the hand of God stays off that thing. Father, I thank you today. I bless everyone who's listening right now. Lord, as you visit us this month, I ask you find these ones worthy of your visitation and bring them into the light of the Abrahamic blessing. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.